with us over in Matthew's Gospel, the 26th chapter. Matthew's Gospel, the 26th chapter. Verse number six. It says, now when Jesus was in Bethany, in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box, a very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation. And we'll find out why they had that in a moment. Saying, to what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you. See, so often mankind tries to take people out of poverty thinking that will help them by giving them money and so forth. But you have to get the poverty out of the people. You have to change their character. It's the same way with sin. So often we think we can just take people out of sin and they'll be okay, but you, it doesn't work that way. You have to get the sin nature out of them. It's like a hog. You can take them out of the mud and you can wash him, clean him up and put the prettiest bow on him you want to. But it's in his nature to go back to that mud hole. But if you could change his nature, that would keep him out of the mud hole. It says, Jesus said, for ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her, a remembering of what she did. My question to you this morning is, what is your memorial going to be? What are you going to be remembered for? It says in verse 14, Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest and said unto them, What will ye give me? And I will deliver him unto you. And they coveted with him for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. We see here why the disciples had indignation about what this woman was doing that was good. Because Judas Iscariot was full of self and flesh and the world and he didn't want that. He is the one that moved others to have indignation and say, why waste this could be sold and given to the poor? It wasn't about the poor. It was about Judas. You ever notice that the, the painting there of the Last Supper, you, one guy's got a little bag there. That's Judas, got the little money bag. We understand there in John 666, six, six, good place for it, it says, Many of his disciples departed from him and walked with him no more. And Jesus looked at Peter and the disciples said, Are you going to leave also? And they said, Where shall we go? Thou holdest the words of eternal life. Then Jesus said, You twelve have I chose, but one of you is a devil. In other words, Jesus is letting us know the reason those left, those disciples departed from him and walked no more. They was listening to the wrong voice. And I say to you this morning, if you're listening to the wrong voice, that voice could carry you to hell. And it's drugged so many people into hell listening to the wrong voice. But on the other hand, there's another voice that's crying out to you that can leave you a good memorial for the whole world to see and be reminded of who you are. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you today most of all for who you are. We thank you, Father, for an opportunity, Lord, Father, to live in this land of free that we enjoy, God, but we understand the days are evil, Lord. And Father, if we don't hold on to what others have paid for of our freedom, we can lose that freedom. 
And Father, help us, Lord, in the day that we're living, the time that we're on stage, this book of Acts, Lord, that is not ended. It's Acts of the Apostles today is, is being written our life of, on the stage of life. And Father, help us to make a difference, Lord, to hold on to our freedoms, whether it be our physical freedoms, Lord, or our spiritual freedoms through Jesus Christ and those who have brought the message of Christ to us. Father, help us, Lord, to carry it to others and be heroes of faith as well. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen and amen. What is your memory going to be? What legacy are you leaving behind? When people mention your name, what is the first thing that comes to their mind? If I mention Judas Iscariot, we know the one that betrayed Christ, went out and hung himself. If we say Benedict Arnold, we understand that he is the one who was a traitor to our country. On the other hand, we say George Washington, he was a, a founding president of our country. Are the different names that we say, if we say Billy Graham or, or Jesus Christ, I mean, I mean, immediately it's attached to our name what we leave behind. What are we leaving behind? Memory means, a, 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 a memorial means memory. What is in people's memory of you? It's a reminder. A memorial is a reminder. That which keeps something alive is what a memorial is. That's what a memorial day is for us today. It's reminding us of all those who have given themselves and some given and all given the ultimate price, their life for our freedom that we now enjoy. Amen? Not only in our flesh, but in our spirit world. In the spiritual world, Heroes that has trailed the blaze, uh, blazed the trail for us and brought us this gospel, amen, that we now enjoy. Someone had to bring it to me and you, and there's others waiting on me and you to bring it to them. And so we can be and leave a legacy. I ask you this morning, what makes a hero? What makes a hero? They were all doers. What makes a hero? They were all doers. When we read about different, Bible, different stories in the Bible, there wasn't people that sat on the pew and did nothing. That woman wasn't like the disciples just sitting around. She got up with that alabaster box and she poured it upon his head. Very expensive ointment. In other words, she understood the price of that oil in there of what Jesus paid for, for our freedom, amen. For our eternal life, Jesus paid an awesome price. We could never give him enough. Heroes and faith has the ability to see and do things other people cannot see and do. Do you hear me? Heroes and faith has the ability to see what needs to be done and do it. Other people cannot even see or will not do it. My wife went to a little thing the other day with politicians in there and once running for office and they was answering questions and she told me some of the comments that was made and and there was a couple of them they was really lambasting and I said if I'd been there I believe I would have stood up and I said look we're here to find out how they believe not their personality at least they got enough gall to run for office, that's something that the rest of us won't do. Hello. So next time we cut the preacher or the teacher or the singer, you know, maybe hitting the wrong key or not as good a message, <laughs> don't be so hard on them. <laughs> Else get up there and do it yourself. <laughs> Amen. God's good, isn't he? He loves us all supremely. Jesus died for us all. He said in James in the second chapter, verse number 17, he said, even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead being alone. A hero is not a hero that has no works. A hero has works attached to it. Something they've done that made them that hero. Verse number 18 says, yea, man may say, thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works and I will show thee my faith by my works. 
Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. A lot of people say, well, well, you know, I might not do anything in church, but I believe. Well, that's no big deal. The devils believe and they even tremble. Church people won't even tremble. They might believe, but they don't tremble. <laughs> Have a fear, a reverent fear of God. James 1, 22, it says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Just believing is not enough. He says, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Faith is an action word we understand. We know that, don't we? Faith is an action word. Faith means full of firm persuasion. Remember Paul talking to King Agrippa and King Agrippa told Paul, said, Paul, almost you persuaded me to be a Christian. Almost, Brother Whitfield, you taught me into doing something. <laughs> Brother Hart, I wonder how many times we got people about to do something for the Lord. He said, almost. If he's in hell today, I guarantee you he wished he would have accepted Christ that day. Faith means moral conviction. Moral conviction. And that is through the truthfulness of God as the standard. See, we can't have moral convictions of mankind because they change. What used to be moral yesterday or what used to be immoral yesterday is moral today. What used to be wrong yesterday or be shunned on yesterday is accepted today. And so it keeps changing what will tomorrow be. But we go back to the standard if God's the standard, he said, I'm the same yesterday, I'm the same today, and I'll be the same tomorrow. He never changes. So the standard never changes. So God has to be our standard for moral character. Right? Doesn't matter what man says or does. It means assurance. Faith means assurance or, or convinced. We have to be convinced. Faith is, is assurance. We can't have a little doubt and a little faith in there. It can't believe. You know, have a little faith uh, or a little believing and a little doubt mixed in together. It, wasn't, it can't work that way. That's why Jesus told the centurion, he said, believe only. When they come and said, hey, your daughter's dead, he stopped and said, hey, believe only. Believe only. Jairus' daughter. Jairus. He told Jairus. Your daughter's dead. Jesus got him distracted back to him. Uh -uh, look, don't, don't get focused on that when you got that bad report. Look, look back here. Faith on, believe only, believe only. Don't, don't listen to that. Don't listen to the crowd. Don't listen to the world trying to tell you you're nothing. When God says you're, I give you my everything. Are you with me? Remember the story there in the Bible in the fifth chapter of Luke where the man was lame and Jesus was teaching and there was a crowd and there was friends, was, that's kind of friends I want. <laughs> he said, we got to get him to Jesus. And they, they came and they couldn't get him there because of the crowd. And so they didn't turn around and go back home and say, well, we just can't get you up there. We're going to have to just carry you back home. No, they figured out a way. They climbed up on top of the building and they ripped into the tiling and, you know, and they'd begin to lower the guy down with ropes down in front of Jesus. Uh, I can imagine Jesus standing there, maybe some of the fiber or the straw or whatever coming down and it got his attention and he looked up and it says in verse 20, it says, and when he, what? Say it, saw his faith. You'll see faith. That's why James says, uh, show me your faith without your works. I'll show you my faith with my works. Amen? You ain't got to tell me that you love the Lord this morning. You're here. I ain't got to ask you, right? Brother and Sister Hart, they on vacation. They, they didn't have to come to church. Nobody ever know. <laughs> they would. <laughs> but I'm glad that they hear, amen? If they decided to go to the beach today, vacation, I wouldn't have thought any less of them. They deserve a break. Amen? Jesus went away into the mountains, did he not? That's me. I don't want to go to the mountains. I don't care much about the beach. It's too hot. I want to go to mountains. <laughs> Are you with me? <laughs> I got your takers on that one. <laughs> All right. He said, when he saw their faith, faith in action, faith is an action word. When he saw their faith, 
He said, thy sins be forgiven thee. And some of the, who is he who thinks he can forgive sin? Jesus said, which is easier? Thy sins be forgiven thee or rise, take up thy bed and walk. He said, the same, the same God saves is the same God that heals. You can't separate it from God. Huh? That's why he said in James, the fifth chapter, is any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church, let them anoint them with oil, let them pray the prayer over them, prayer of faith, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And if they committed sin, it shall be forgiven them. Because you can't separate healing from salvation. One blood did it all. It's a package deal. Amen? A package, I got my salvation, I got my healing. Amen? The problem is a lot of times we keep our, us Pentecostal, we keep our salvation because we, we know we can't see it now, but we lose our healing. We get distracted by the world. Man, you need to hold on to it. Same blood of Jesus saved us as the same blood that heals us. Same, praise God. Can you feel it? <laughs> Woo. God's awesome. Faith makes us take action. Amen? Think about the, the woman with the issue of blood. She got her miracle because she took action. She took action. She said, if I can but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be whole. She done made it up her mind. First, there must be a willing mind. She goes there that day, you know. I, bet, I imagine when she's getting dressed, she's thinking, man, when I touch the hem of that garment. She's been losing blood for 12 years. And she said, oh, when I get there. No doubt she's weak, losing all that blood, gets there, you know. She reaches up and she touched the hem of his garment. And Jesus' virtue went out of him. And Jesus said, somebody touched me. Peter said, hey, Master said, oh, it's a bunch of people here. A lot of people touch you. He said, nobody. No, somebody touched me with faith. I know a lot of people touches me. But let me tell you, God's not moved by by touch. He's moved by faith. Amen. God's not moved by pity. Sometimes we say, pull me Lord, pull me. No, God is not moved by pity. He's moved by faith. He's looking for somebody that'll believe him. Just believe him. She got her miracle, daughter. Thy faith hath made thee whole. What's the ten lepers? We know the story, don't you? Ten lepers come to him and said, what do you want? Be cleansed. He said, go show yourself to the priest because they had to. They were still under the Mosaic law. The priest is the only one that could let them back in society. So he says, go. Jesus, understand, we're still under the Mosaic law. Go show yourself to the priest. And it says, as they went, they was cleansed. One of them turned around, saw that he was cleansed, came back. He started praising him. He says, would there not 10 where the other nine at? Boy, it sounds like church people, don't it? Sunday morning, I'm looking at you. I'm going to give us all a break tonight. We're not having church tonight. <laughs> oh, let me get some. Let me meddle a little bit right now. I know Brother Hart don't have this problem. Sunday morning. Amen. It's like I blinked Sunday night and boop, you disappeared on me. Boop. Oh, let me. What's that? The Lord said you di disappeared on him. Ain't my church. Are you with me? Oh, if it stung. Oh, me if it stung. Let it sting. Amen. Amen. Oh, me one. <laughs> God's good. Jesus said to the one that came back and praised him. He says, because what you've done, the faith has made thee whole. You see, what happens is when we begin to praise God, some of the things that the enemy had stole gets restored back to us. The more we give God, the more he gives us. Maybe a hand got to eat off of leprosy. And as that man began to praise him, that old hand came back. Made whole again, complete. Are you with me? What about Jonah? Remember Jonah? Jonah took a long route. A detour to Nineveh. Read the story when you get home. It's not about Jonah, but it's about the people of Nineveh. He went there after he finally, God got his attention there in the, in, the, in the whale's belly and he prayed after three days. He said, then he prayed. And he vomited him up on the, on the bank and Jonah said, where do you want me to go? He said, go to Nineveh. God don't change. 
R.W. Schambach said when God was trying to call him to preach, he was 18 years old. Uh, he joined the United States Navy, got on a ship, went on the other side of the world, uh, got down in the bottom of that ship, and there was the Lord sitting there and said, I still want you to preach. David said, where shall I go from the presence of God? Man, you can't go nowhere. He's everywhere. Hallelujah. Just obey him and do what he's called you to do. I preached last Sunday, if y'all remember, about gifts and callings, remember? The Bible said gifts and callings are without repentance. Uh, and so what happens is that, uh, that people take their gifts and calling, their talents that God has instilled in them and they're born with, uh, and they go out there in the world and they use it, whether it be music or singing or, uh, or whatever it is. They, and they use those talents out there in the world, but they don't get nothing for it. Zero. Oh, no, they got a lot of money. <laughs> Ask me that 100 years from now. They got all this fame. Ask me that 100 years from now. Nothing, get nothing until they come and bring them gifts and talents to God and let God activate their purpose. When they activate their purpose, what you're born to be doing your purpose. My friend, then I begin to start getting rewards in heaven for my talents, my gifts. Are you with me? Ain't God good to us? He says, here, he went to Nineveh. And he tells the people to repent. And the Bible said that they repented. The king called everyone to repent in sackcloth and ashes. And it says in Jonah, I don't have the scripture, but you'll find it somewhere. Read it from, it's somewhere between uh, first chapter and third chapter to the end. <laughs> it says, it says that God, if I can find it here, God saw the works, their works of faith. God sees our works of faith. She read the scripture a while ago. God is, I forget how it goes, but I read it the last scripture, last Sunday night. I read that scripture here. Amen. God is faithful to see your works. So often we go through life, thank God ain't taking notice. He, he, he takes good notice of all our works. Amen. Thank you for that, Lord. God's good to us. I mean, faith it's something you can see. I mean, this, this, this building at one time was a vision. It was a vision. We sat down, me and Othel Drigger sat down there with a, with a drafter and drew this building up in that storefront down there one Saturday morning. We measured it out. I counted the one-foot tiles in that floor down there to count it out. And I guess y'all women wish I'd have counted the nursery a little bit bigger and the ladies' bathroom a little bit bigger and all this stuff. But I counted the tiles. That's so many feet. That'll be big enough. And it was a vision. And then a bunch of doers came along and put legs to it. And it became a reality. I remember... Walter Cribb, he started uh, the Oakley Road Church of God back years ago. He started it there in a little building. And, and he had a little trailer down there when we first started our church in a little trailer before we got the trailer. And, and I, I caught wind, he wanted to sell his little mission trailer down there. And we went to look at it, some of us, and, and uh, he talked with us about it, but we changed our mind and went and bought something else. But long story short, a couple of years later, I was here on a Sunday night, just standing here by myself in the building, and he opened the door, come walking through. Didn't have a clue. I hadn't seen him. I hadn't seen him since then. He come walking in, walking down the aisle, looking around like this. And I was standing up here, just waiting on him to get up here. He, he said, brother, I don't have to ask you if y'all have faith. I can see it. You can see faith. Amen. You can see faith. Faith in action. That makes a hero. That's what he's talking about. Oh, Lord, I got to hurry. Listen, let me jump down here. What is faith? Faith. Faith is what we see. It's, he said in Hebrews 11, chapter verse 1, he says, Now faith is a substance. This pulpit is a substance. This building is a substance. At one time it was a vision, but faith applied to it with some doers and it became a substance, a reality. Now faith is a substance. A substance is a sitting under. It's a support. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for. 
We was hoping for a building, but faith made it a reality. It's the evidence of things, our proof of things not seen. We didn't see the building, but here is proof that we had a vision. Same way of everything in our life. It says faith, it talks about it in Hebrews 11.3. He said, through faith, we understand. Through faith, we have an understanding. See, a lot of world, a lot of people in the world said there is no God. You see, through faith, we have an understanding. The Bible said in Proverbs and Psalms, he says, but the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, which is understanding. Or the respect, or acknowledging that God is God. Right? So he's saying that through faith, we have this understanding. Aren't you glad you have an understanding? That we were... We're framed by the word of God. The worlds were framed by the word of God so that things that were, uh, things that are seen were made of things which do not, which do appear. Amen. So what he spoke everything into existence. By faith, we understand that. They spent billions of dollars trying to figure out and they come to the conclusion we came, came from a little spot that boomed out and we came from monkeys and all the other theology that's out there. But faith tells us in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Isn't that so simple? What I don't believe that, Brother Whitfield, don't change God's word one bit. So we got to understand faith teaches us to have a fear of God and an understanding that he is real. Verse number four, Hebrews 11 chapter, he says, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. In other words, faith will cause us to put God first in our life. Abel went out and found the very best that he had and presented the best to God. You see, faith will make us and teach us to put God first and our best foot forward for God. That's what faith teaches us to do. We learned that from Abel here. It says in verse number five, by faith Enoch walked, uh, or he said, Enoch, we understand in the Old Testament, it said Enoch walked with God and was seen not. So he says here in verse five, by faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death. My friend, I'm not gonna feel the pain of death. He said, oh death, where's your sting at? When it comes time for me to leave this body, I'm not gonna leave this body kicking and screaming. The angel's gonna come and get me by the hand and slip me out and carry me to heaven. You see, if I was lost, a demon would get me and drag me kicking and screaming and drag me into hell. But thank God I ain't gotta go that route. Why? Because I got faith. And faith has taught me how to walk with God. Psalms 119, verse 105, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. You see, when you walk in darkness, you stumble at the word, or you stumble at everything else. But when you're in the light, it's easy to see. It's easy. Get up in the middle of the night in your own home that you know the surroundings. Don't turn on a light. Make sure it's very dark in there. And get up and run as fast as you can to the kitchen. You're going to have a problem, probably. Mm -hmm. But if you turn a light on, you can run as fast as you want to, and no, no problem. Isn't it wonderful? That's what faith does for us. He said in Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God, say it, must believe that he is. He is what? Whatever I have need of. That's why he told Moses, tell him, I am has sent you. I am whatever you need. Whatever you need this morning, God said, I am. He that cometh, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe. A lot of people say, well, if I see a miracle, I believe. No, you gotta believe, and then you see a miracle. Right? Believe that he is the rewarder of them who diligently seek him. It says in verse number seven, it says, by faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear and prepared an ark. In other words, faith will teach us to work for God. I won't have to come and beg you to teach a class. Let me tell you, faith will have you come into me. Brother Whitfield, I need something to do in the church. You got a class, I'll teach you. If I, you need me to clean, whatever. I, I'll clean the bathrooms, whatever you want me to do. Because I got faith. Amen? 
when I first got saved, I, I didn't know how to teach. I didn't know how to preach. I didn't know how, how to really carry a tune singing and all that still long. But, you know, I didn't know anything, but I knew how to cut grass. I loaded my lawnmower up, and I went over to church and was going to Ridgeville then and cut the grass. I tried to be the best grass cutter I could be for God. You was called to cut grass. I'm called, like Paul, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And let me tell you, if you're a pastor, you, can, you have to do all things. I was running around here, it's more like a chicken with a head cut off, trying to get everything done. God's good though, isn't he? We got her done. <laughs> oh, help us, Lord. I'm about finished. Listen, we understand that faith will teach us to work for God. He said in Philippians 2 and 12, the last part, he said, work out your own salvation. And that's where a lot of people quit. They'll say, well, Brother Whitfield, you know, I, I hear what you're saying, but, you know, the Bible tells me to work out my own salvation. <laughs> it didn't stop there. He said, with fear and trembling. With fear and trembling. As the Bible said in Hebrews, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. It's easy to shake your fist at God now, but wait till you get a little closer to him. He said, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Let me tell you, Madeline O'Hara, who's dead now, is in hell, burning in hell unless she repented. I don't think so. her son's a Baptist preacher, but she took uh, prayer out, helped take prayer out of school. We understand that, but she's an atheist. Uh, but when she stands before God, her knees are going to tremble and and give way and she's going to fall to the ground and she'll confess that Jesus Christ is Lord according to God's word right there. See, one place in God's word it says that every knee should bow and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But then it says over in Romans he said that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall. You should on this earth, but if you don't, you shall then because he is King of kings, Lord of lords. Those coming instruments, Hebrews 11, 8. He says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out unto a place which he should receive after receive from her, what did he do? Obey. Let me tell you, faith will teach us obedience. When I see people disobeying God, disobeying the pastor, disobeying everything, I'm telling you, I, I, they don't have much faith. Faith will teach me to obey. See, my dad taught me faith. He had this belt. <laughs> he taught me to believe. <laughs> and I, Brother Lonnie, a lot of things I didn't do because I had faith in that belt. <laughs> Amen. He was like Pilate and had belt, we'll travel. <laughs> but he, you know, God, my dad, I, I don't, Whitfields are not known for their patience. Don't get excited and amen and all that right now, but I'm not a patient person. I'd be the first. Bible said, confess your faults. I'm not very patient. <laughs> Y'all missed your chance there. Anyhow, to kind of sneak a little bit of amen in there, you know, but my dad was full-blooded Whitfield. <laughs> so, He'd set me down beside him when I do something wrong. And he'd talk for a while. He'd talk. I don't never remember nothing he said. Because <laughs> I knew what was coming after the talk. I don't care if I cried and snot run and everything else and, you know, jerked and all. It, it didn't work. But after I got older, I realized what it was. It wasn't for my benefit he was talking. It was for his. He was kind of like Jesus when he went to the temple. and they had, they had the money changers in there. He went out and he sat down and he made that whip. He didn't need that whip. He needed time to compose himself. <laughs> so that he would see it. He said, be careful and sin not. <laughs> right? Ah, oh, help us, Lord. Teach us to obey. And going down to, uh, on down, the next passage, on down, on down, down to where it says Sarah down there. Okay, right here. Through faith, Sarah received strength. Everybody say receive strength. strength. To conceive seed. You know, anything conceived is going to bear. You know that? 
You might not, listen, you might not, that farmer plants that, Brother Woody, when you plant that corn, do you put it on top of the ground? You put it down under the ground a little bit? Yeah, yeah. okay. You look like my daughter, my granddaughter poured all, all of it in the same hole. <laughs> Big bag of seed. <laughs> As you're walking away, do you look back and say, eh, it ain't going to work. It didn't come up. Do you say that? You got faith that God takes that earth has conceived that seed. <sighs> you had faith to receive strength to conceive that seed. You know, so often when people ask God for something, I mean, and it's not like, well, it didn't work. Man, come on now. You get pregnant with a baby, it's nine months. Nine months waiting on it. I mean, you, ladies, you ain't even started showing you done putting a big old maternity dress on. <laughs> I'm pregnant. You got a flat stomach. Well, I'm pregnant. Lord, I receive, faith will cause us to receive strength to conceive our miracle in us. Whew. Wow. That'll preach right there. I don't have time, but let me get down. In closing, and three hours later, he said, Stand, but no. Nah. It's the last scriptures here. Look at Malachi, the third chapter. I'm talking about. Heroes. Faith turns us into heroes. Faith will turn us into a nothing, into a hero. All these. Yeah, read the whole book of Hebrews 11th chapter. It's the heroes of faith. People that did great things, just ordinary people that had faith. And now they're in the hero hall of faith, hall of fame. Malachi in the third chapter, verse 14. Y'all read the whole chapter of Malachi there too right here that I'm talking about in the third chapter, but I'm gonna pick it up in verse 14. He said, you have said, it is vain to serve God. This is what the world says. Preach, I hear what you're saying, but it's vain to serve God. It's vain to do a work for God. So, Brother Whitfield, you, you spent 35 years preaching in this church here. What has it got for you? Ask me that a hundred years from now. Of course, you probably ask me that in 20 years too. You know, you know, I don't know. I'm getting on up there now. What profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? They asked him all these questions. Verse 15, it says, Now we call the proud happy the haughty people, happy. We call them happy. They that work wickedness are set up. It seems like they that tempt God are delivered. It's kind of like Psalms 73. David says, he said, as for me, my steps was well nigh slipped. I was about to give up. When I saw the prosperity of the wicked, when I saw how everybody that was out there in sin just prospered and having a good time and doing all this yada, 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 and all this stuff, and it gets down to verse 17, and he says, until I went into the house of the Lord, then I understood their end. There's an end to everything. Go ahead and live life like you want, but understand there's an end to this life somewhere. There's two roads of life. Jesus talked about it's a straight and narrow and a broad road. And, and Isaiah saw the end of one and Ezekiel saw the end of another. It's the last scripture in both books. The last scripture in the book of Isaiah. And it says that he saw over in the pits of hell all those that sinned against God. And there was a horrible, a boring, hateful sight. Didn't want to look at them. But Ezekiel, the last scripture says uh, that he saw the end of the other road, the straight and narrow, and he says uh, that he saw this city and, and God was there. That's what I want to see. Aren't you? Verse 16, it says, Then they that feared the Lord 
spake often one to another. And the Lord hearkened and heard it. And a book of remembrance, a memorial, a remembering was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. God remembers, Ashley, everything you do. Verse 17, And they shall be mine, <laughs> saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, that I will, I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him then shall ye return, talking about us, uh, and discern between the righteous and the wicked, uh, between him that serveth God and him that serveth not. Uh, I ask you this morning, what is your memorial? What are you remembered for? What is in God's book of, of, of remembrance about you? What is the world when you're gone? What are they going to say and remember about you? It's what we do in our everyday life which will go down in history. And God is writing in us today in that book of remembrance about us all. Now, I don't know where you stand with God today. I don't know what your, your memorial will be, your legacy you'll leave behind. But let me tell you what. My mom and dad left a legacy that I could follow and I'm trying my dear best, me and my wife, to leave a legacy that my son and daughter can follow behind. And my granddaughter and grandsons, my granddaughter's grandson can live, can follow behind generation after generation. My friends, when we leave the knowledge of God into their hearts, let me tell you what God gave me for my mom and dad it wasn't money but it was the knowledge of God and that means more to me than everything else on this earth because it says what does a man gain if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul or what shall we give in exchange for our soul and I don't know where you stand with God today let me tell you but one day soon friend we'll stand before him and give an account for this life and Jesus Christ came and laid aside his glory and came to this world and gave his life for me and you. And if we reject that, my friend, we'll be without excuse. I'm about to ask you to stand, and when I do, if you need to come and pray this morning, why don't you do that? Say, Lord, I want you to help me, Lord, to leave behind a great memorial that others will be mindful of you for. Amen? Maybe you need to be saved in here this morning. Maybe you need healing. Maybe you need prosperity. Whatever it is, God has it all.